Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to give you three financial decisions that can put you closer to financial independence and financial freedom. These three decisions I've made in my life and luckily, thankfully, I'm in a, in a pretty good position to be in as far as financial independence goes. So hopefully sharing this knowledge, you might use one, two, all three of these decisions and hopefully put yourself and your families in a better financial position. All right, so number one, common sense, live within your means. I don't care how much income somebody makes or what your salary or something, still doesn't leave you immune to not living within your means. There's plenty of people making six figures that are living above their means, buying too much stuff they don't need, that is getting them, putting them in jeopardy to be in debt. Every, seems like every week I see online or on the, on the television, on the news about the record levels of credit card debt that people are, are undertaking and all the record setting debt, personal debt that people have. I don't know if it's because people are out of been out of work and they got themselves in a mess or too many obligations that, that got himself underwater that re result in being in debt or they're just wanting too many things or thinking things, material possessions will lead to happiness and usually it backfires and puts them in debt, which leads to more stress. So I don't care how much money one makes or little money one makes, be careful and, and try not to live above your means, live within your means. I know one, personally, one of the best decisions I ever made was not getting too big of a house, too big of a mortgage. I was able to be patient, find the right house for me at a really good price and that was that offered a bunch of value. I bought low, sold high, put me in a great position to buy my next house. And I made a couple videos about that experience you could check out on this channel. But a really good position to be in the in my next house. And I paid it off within four or five years. And then once you free up a mortgage and you don't have rent payment, mortgage payment, then you can put that away to invest and and you can really, really be on the fast track to financial independence. So live within your means. I could have went and bought a house. I love it when you apply for loans and they, they tell you, oh, this is how much you can afford or this is how much loan you've been approved, pre-approved for. But that doesn't mean you need to take it. And I always wanted to get uh, something I was comfortable with both financially and physically in the house. Too much house sometimes leads to too much stress, too many responsibilities, uh, and too much to keep up with. So live within your means definitely is one of the best financial decisions you can do. I spent 10, 15 years living on 50%, if not more, of my income, or excuse me, save 50% or more of my income. So I would make a certain amount of money every year, but I didn't max that out. I lived on a very, very small portion of that salary or that income, saved and invest the rest. Eventually, year after year, that stuff compounds and you are in a great financial position. All right, number two, you heard this a lot, save anywhere from three to 12 months expenses. If you don't like your job or if you get laid off or you get fired or your company decides to downsize, you don't want to be caught off guard with nothing saved up where you're scrambling and you get behind in, in on your bills. Then you got to resort to living off credit cards or going to these payday loan places. You don't want to be in that position. And so it's wise to save three to 12 months of expenses. That's a personal preference. Some people are okay with three. Some want to be extra conservative and live or sock away 12 months of experiences. 
or expenses. That way, if something happens to you, either by your own personal choice, like you ain't going to work at this place no more, I'm, I'm worth more than this, I don't need to be in a toxic work environment or, or just it's not a good fit, whatever the case may be, you could say, I'm good, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to try working for this other company, pursuing this other opportunity. Well, you could do that when you've got three to 12 months of expenses uh, set aside. So definitely that would be a wise decision because you never know when emergency is going to happen. Your car is going to break down, need a new car, need to repair your car, uh, medical expense, maybe home improvement uh, or home maintenance, where you got to all of a sudden come up with this money from these unexpected expenses, then that is one other reason why you need to have three to 12 months of expenses saved up because it's all about financial freedom. Financial freedom, financial independence means you can make that money work for you. You can have more options than you could when you're leave, living paycheck to paycheck and at the mercies of, of bill collectors and creditors that are breathing down your neck trying to get um, money from you. And you get behind that eight ball and it snowballs and you can't get out of that uh, situation. So be proactive, save three to 12 months of your expenses. Some people do 90 days or three months. Some people do six months Some people do 12. Just have some money set aside where you will be okay if you know what hits the fan. And number three, definitely super important. Always look for ways to increase your earning power. Whether you're going to college and you're deciding on the major, which one is going to bring you happiness, but also earning power. What kind of skills can you learn that increase your earning power and your earning potential? What can you do to be in demand where people will pay you for your skills, your experience, your knowledge? Is that valuable? Do you learn, do you acquire things that are of value that people will pay good money top dollar for? So always think about increasing your earning power because we probably all know some industries or some people who jobs are at the mercy of technology and at the mercy of the economy and different trends. If you're in a job that there's not much demand and people really could do without you and what you do, there are like a lot of factory jobs. There's this one specialized thing that's just kind of will only work in that one particular setting, that one particular factory. And if that factory goes under, gets shipped off to another country and they outsource the labor, what are you gonna do? You can't take that one skill that you used on that factory line and apply it to other industries. Now, I mean, you can't learn new skills, but I want you to be proactive and learn those skills, in-demand skills, in-demand knowledge that puts you ahead of others, helps you stand out, increase your earning power. Once you do that, you can be in a great position to be financially independent and fin reach financial freedom. Once you increase that earning power, you learn how to generate income, which you're going to learn a lot about on this channel. We're going to have tons of videos that show you how to increase your earning power and different ways to generate income. Once you do that, start getting a good income coming in, start putting it away, investing it. So not only do you have earned income, you're having portfolio income, you're having passive income. Sooner or later, that capital will work for you. You keep living within your means and socking away enough for short-term emergencies and living expenses where you could pay your bills with not having to work. And then long-term, that money's working for you where you don't have to work for money. Instead, that money is working for you. Then that's how you reach financial independence. So again, three important financial decisions. 
which will get you so much closer to financial freedom and financial independence. That's one, live within your means. Two, have three to 12 months of expenses saved up. And number three, always look for ways to increase your earning power. If you do that, if you increase your skill set, increase your earning power, live within your means, have money socked away for emergencies just in case you need it, you are going to be that much closer to financial freedom. If you like this video, I appreciate it. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you can get all the latest videos from this channel.